My daughter and I both had an eye removed due to cancer. How do you feel when I do your hair? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you feel pretty? Yeah. Show them your, your sassy pageant faces. <laughs> do you like pageants? You ready? Uh, I'll, no. <laughs> Let's see whose eyes is bigger and smaller. Uh, this retinoblastoma is cancer in one eye, and when you have bilateral, it, it's in both eyes. When you have it in, like you can't even feel it, I guess it's like a part of us. You know what stupid it is? <laughs> <laughs> when you have bilateral, like when it's in both eyes, it is hereditary. It's like a 50 50 chance it can be passed on to your children. Oh. <laughs> I was the first one to get it in. Yeah, I bet you were. Whatever. I, I win. No, I win. Okay, you win. No! no! Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I was diagnosed at three years old. So my mom had noticed something about my eye. So she had taken me to an eye doctor. I was cooking. They were in the living room downstairs, and I said, "Y'all come eat supper." And Carla was sitting on the floor playing with Barbies. And she just looked straight up at me. And when I was looking at me and the other one was looking the other way, and I just, uh, my jaw just dropped. Carla wasn't quite three years old yet. And, um. I know, you're gonna cry. <laughs> it goes back a long ways. Yeah. What was the prognosis? She had bilateral retinoblastoma. That means there's tumors in both eyes. And her left eye was like, hers was a covering like a glove and a ball. And he said, she's already blind in the eye. And I said, okay. And he said, maybe two weeks. And I said, maybe two weeks of what? And my husband looked at me and I looked at him and I said, no, 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 no. I, no they're not, my baby's not dying. I'm not leaving this hospital without that child going on with me to her brother and sister. We went there for about three or four days. And then he said, um, we're gonna do chemo and we're gonna do freezing treatments on the right eye. He said, I think we can save it. And then a year went by, she was almost four. And I noticed that something I could see when she would do her eye to the side, it was like, you could see the tumor. It was coming back. And the next morning, Carla went into surgery. I was almost four years old when I had my eye removed. When that doctor came out and said, She's cancer free. It's like I could breathe again. Oh God, you know, it's over. I do still live with the condition. I do have a tumor in my right eye. I did freezing treatments as a child, so it's, it's frozen. We tried to keep it as normal as possible, and I didn't treat her any different. I tried not to. So fast forward, she's mm -hmm. a teenager. Oh Lord. I guess she's like any other teenager. She was rebellious. I got pregnant and it happened, you know. I would never call my kid a mistake, but it definitely wasn't planned. I was 18, you know. But um, of course I don't trade that for anything. And I said, we're gonna have a baby. So there was no other option for I mean, us, you know. I mean, abortion's off the table. You know, you're gonna have this baby and if it turns out she does, so be it. We're gonna live this. We've already done it, I've done it, and you can do it too. You're just as strong as I am, so. So you immediately thought of the possibility that the baby would have the same? Yes, you know, it was a 50-50 chance, but you know, Carl always thought, you know, it's not gonna happen to me. When she was six months old, that's when the doctor came in and he was just like, there's a tumor in her right eye. That if we don't do something that, it, you know, it's a stem to the brain, so if it goes to her brain, there's nothing they can do. I literally just said no. And I just walked out and just started crying. How old was she then? Oh, she was two years old when she had her eye removed. I don't know how to have done it without my mom. Like, seriously, like, she's kind of like the rock of our family, you know? One thing that I always feared was it, like, really affecting her at a young age. But the second she got home and she got around her cousins, it's like, she's just this confident kid. I thought it was going to affect her in, like, this major way, and it just didn't, like, She's just so confident. <laughs> like, she'll tell me all the time, Mama, I'm beautiful. And I'm like, girl, yeah, you are. Hey, you're gonna be on that show making those silly faces. Don't you wanna make your faces? <laughs> Riley has changed my life completely. I think the condition affected me growing up until I was 21. I literally hid behind my hair. 
I remember the day she had her eye removed and we came home, I like went in the mirror and I was like, I went from like this and I just went just like this and I was like, never again. You know, she came in and she gave me like a whole new mindset and this hair has been back ever since. <laughs> what do you feel like when you put on a pretty dress? This makes me feel like a princess and this makes me feel like a queen. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, her first pageant it was, she was three years old. Oh, she was wearing like a cute little bathing suit. It was a whole piece and she had a little boat. It was way too big for her head, but it was absolutely so cute. Of course she didn't win, but we had fun. I wanted to try this one. Okay. All right. I wanna do it. Let's see. All right, you're gonna show her exactly how you do it. Just do the regular walk. Oh, she loves them. She has pretty eyes, pretty blinky. And pageants don't just give us a way to feel confident. It's given us so many ways to give back and stuff. And she's been able to raise a ton of money for foundation. <laughs> Good job! And um, here's my favorite crown. I like this one. You can put it on your head and show her. <sighs> you can definitely tell in our small town that people do judge people in pageants and they're like, why would you put makeup and hair in your kid or give her fake spray tans and stuff like that? I mean, that's just how we do it. We like to do it. <laughs> it's not your business. So Lou came into the picture when Riley was one years old. Okay, all right, now Ready? swing. Yeah. Uh. My mom always said that they would just fall out of the sky. When he came along two months later, Riley had to have her eye removed. And like, that was hard and he just was there. Like, it was like he was there the whole time. Are you ready? Yeah. Here you go. She started calling him daddy and he just walked right into that role and that's where he's been since then. Hi. Run to May May, give her a hug. <laughs> <It's a little laughs> okay, at some point you decided to tell your story on social media. Uh, I think she was two. We were just in the bathroom, my hair is a mess, and we're just in there and I was like, let's take our eyes out and like embrace us, you know? Cause I want her to feel confident. I don't want her, this shouldn't be a taboo to her. And my phone's just like whoop, 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 and millions of people are watching our video. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Luke, like our video is going viral. <laughs> so my family, they loved it. They were just like, y'all are so cute. <laughs> of course, there was like mean comments. Are you sick? You took your baby's eye out just for this. You poked her eye out so you would match. Irresponsible to have a child knowing you would bring that pain to them. I would tell them, we don't care. Things happen. God had a purpose for her. She's here and she's here for a reason, so. Come on, pretty girl. Go, pretty. Give mommy a hug. <laughs> what do you hope for your family? Marriage. Gross. More babies. IVF and PGT testing, they can literally go in there and pick out the ones that has the genetic mutation, poke them right on out, and then give me babies who won't, you know, have the same cancer as us. Good daddy hug. <laughs> <laughs> what I hope for Riley is that she just keeps on doing whatever makes her happy, you know, whether it be pageants or sports or the band. <laughs> whatever comes next for Riley, I'm just here to support her no matter what. I always had a feeling everything was gonna be okay and maybe that feeling that everything was gonna be okay was actually right. It just had to be bad before it could be okay. 